This is Life Rewired, the Brain Injury Podcast, for survivors, by survivors. And now your host, Rob and Ashley. Hi, I'm Rob, and this is Life Rewired. Joining me today is Julie Wall. Hello, Julie. Hi, Rob. Happy to be here. Thank you. Um, today, we're going to talk about two items that are near and dear to Julie's heart. She is an occupational therapist, and she has a caregiver online program. And also, she is a LaBlast dance fitness class instructor. So let's get started with the caregiver online program. Tell us a little bit about that, how that got started. Absolutely. So as you mentioned, I am an occupational therapist and I've been doing this work for over 11 years now and primarily working and specializing in neurological rehabilitation. And just over the years, working with a lot of patients and their caregivers, their loved ones, I just started noticing a pattern happening where you know, we were working with the patient directly, and then we were kind of expecting them to go home and continue with this work with their caregiver. And yet we weren't providing sufficient time and training for them to really grasp certain concepts, feel comfortable and confident in their abilities to assist them at home to the best of their abilities. And so um, it, it came to me that, well, how great would it be if there could be a program online that's providing more direct training and education for the caregiver, because they're often the person in that care partnership who's left behind, so to speak, mm -hmm. right? There's a lot of attention and resources put into the survivor, understandably so, but then the care partner gets left behind and they're going, wait a second, I, I'm kind of thrown into this role, right? I a loved one, something happened to them. And all of a sudden, I'm expected to be 10 other things in my life that I didn't receive training for. There's no manual to be a caregiver, right? Right. And so I wanted to create something in an online space that would provide more of that direct training and support, um, a little mm. bit more handholding, a little bit more you know, direct feedback, giving them the time to explore and try and, you know, try again, right? It's not going to be perfect the first time. And the little, you know, 30 minute caregiver treatment sessions that we're giving people in the hospital system, even in outpatient clinics, is just not enough. And I wanted mm -hmm. to create something more personalized, um, really get to know the caregiver, the, you know, their situation and be able to really support them on a deeper level. And so that's where it kind of came about. And so the program caregiving through a therapeutic lens, the focus of that is really training caregivers to think more like an occupational therapist, because I realized occupational therapists, we know we have a very unique lens in which we are viewing our patients, right? We're constantly mm -hmm. looking at the person their environment that they're in, and then the occupation or activity that they want to engage in, need to engage in on a day-to-day -day basis. And we're constantly looking at these three domains and creating this, what we call that just right fit, right? We want to support yeah. what we call occupational performance, which is basically just that ability to perform, to do your day-to-day -day activities. And finding that fit between the three is key to really yeah. helping somebody as they're recovering from brain injury, because there's still going to be residual deficits that they're working on that they're dealing with, you know? So mm -hmm. if we can change, modify, adapt, um, support, encourage, just create the space for the person recovering to be more independent, um, to try different things. Oh, that didn't work. Let's try something else. And giving caregivers that knowledge base of how to yeah. go about that, how to think about these different domains. Um, I want to give caregivers that perspective because it, it's going to allow them to problem solve themselves, to you know, kind of help their loved ones in a deeper more enriched way to empower their loved one and then 
therefore, you know, reduce that burden of care on themselves in the long run. Gotcha. So how in this world do you say to a caregiver, okay, XYZ is going to say this or do that. How does that translate to them? Is And what I mean by that is, I'll give you an example. Like my wife will see that I'm not picking up on something. And the normal person is not going to tell that, but she can just tell by the look on my face. He ain't getting it. So she steps in and translates for me. So does that program help them understand what to look for? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, as, as you know, with brain injury, everyone is individual in terms of what they're mm -hmm. experiencing. Um, the changes that occur is different for every single person. And so there's incredible resources out there. If you know where to look, there's some great resources out there. Brain Injury Association, right? They have talks and workshops and education on the general um, ideas of brain injury, the general, okay, here's the symptoms you're going to see. But what I want to provide is that individualization of, okay, what are we seeing here? What are you noticing? What are those signs and cues to pick up on? And then what you can do as a caregiver, like what is that best next step? Instead of just jumping in and we call it that overhelping, right? Because it's, it's your yes. loved one. You want to help. You don't want to see your loved one suffer. So you mm -hmm. tend to overhelp and just kind of jump in and, oh, honey, let me get that for you. Let me do it for you. And of yes. course, we know the research says in brain injury, that's not the best way to promote that neuroplasticity. You got to allow yes. them the time, give them the space to problem solve themselves, to try and fail safely, mm -hmm. you know, but creating the space to try and fail and try again until we get what works. And so what I wanted to develop with my program is again, that very individualized, you know, I'm not giving cookie cutter answers of this is what you might see in brain injury. It's more very direct to their situation, what's happening with their loved one, um, the caregiver themselves, right? Each caregiver is going to be different and unique and their learning, th their way to best learn is going to be different. And so we tap into all that to make sure that they are understanding the information, that they have time to digest the information, that they have time mm. to implement the information and receive feedback to really at at the end of it, at the end of my program, I want them to master it. I want them to feel empowered and um, confident in their capabilities as that caregiver. Yeah, I think you're feeling a big need. That is one thing that we see a lot in our support groups is the caregivers are the ones who are just kind of winging it. And a lot of times they're getting it wrong. Not always, but a lot of times they are. Because yeah. this is new territory for them. Exactly. Exactly. And it's no fault of the caregiver. They are in a whole new world, right? Unless you have mm -hmm. medical background training. I think I kind of take it for granted a little time sometimes where I'm like, oh, yeah, I've been in this world for 15 years. I know what that means. Don't you know what that means? No, of course. Yeah. No, they don't know what that means. You know, let's break it down. Let's talk about what that means, what that looks like. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, they're they're given so much information, especially at the beginning, right? They're in the hospital, then they go to a yeah. rehab facility. And it's just like information, information, here's the handouts, mm -hmm. here's the pamphlets, here's where you can go for this, that and the other. And you can imagine how overwhelming that is. They're already at capacity mentally, physically, emotionally, just by, oh my gosh, my loved one had a brain injury. You know, that's crisis mode, right? We go into crisis right. mode, uh, survival mode and everything else can just kind of go to the wayside for a while. And that makes total sense. And then they're sent home and then it's like, oh, oh no, I, I don't, I don't really know what to do. What, what is that first step? What, how, how do I best help? Maybe someone told me somewhere along the way in one session somewhere, but they're not going to recall that they're not going to recall those details. And so yeah, I want to be that support for them to go, it's okay. Let's take that breath. Let's right. go over the information that you need that is pertinent to you because some of that information is not going to apply to your situation. And so, yeah, how do you navigate all of that mm -hmm. and really come to an understanding to feel 
competent, not just like you're floundering. And, you know, I've heard that a lot in talking with caregivers, you know, doing market research for this program and speaking to a lot of caregivers. And yeah, you hear these common themes of it's like swimming through murky water. I don't know which way is up, which way is down, right? There's there's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of um, anxieties around it. There's a lot of isolation there. They yes. feel alone in that role. And I want them to know that they're not alone, that mm -hmm. I am here to be with them, to work through what is difficult for them, to guide them in the best way that I can as an occupational therapist, right? I, I don't, have the the background of a medical doctor or a psychologist, but in my world of occupational therapy, which is very holistic, and there is absolutely mental health that is brought into our training um, along oh, with physical yeah. health and really looking at the person holistically. So we absolutely can tap into all aspects of the human being. Um, That's awesome. But within that scope, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot that can be done. There's a lot that can be um, given and, and education provided and training provided that is not right now. I love that you cookie, not cookie cutter, but you tailor it to the situation because with the brain injury, there's no two alike. Exactly. We have a lot of commonalities, but everybody is totally different. So that is awesome that you do that. Now, what would one expect, say, when they join your program? Is it like several weeks program? Do you do it weekly or, or how, does that, how does that look for them to join the program? So within the program, as of right now, and it's still a growing program. So it's a, you know, I kind of think of it as this living, breathing organism that as I have more and more clients, you know, it's really going to be, again, very tailored to what they need. So there's always mm -hmm. flexibility within it. But to really learn something, practice it, implement it, get feedback, and eventually master it, we want to make sure that we're spending enough time on it. We're giving it enough time. And yeah. yet at the same time, I don't want to overload and overwhelm even more than they already are. So currently... The program is a six month program and it gives them that time to trial, to breathe within it. Mm. Um, the intensity can vary based on the person, what they are wanting and what they are needing in the moment. So that's looking at either one one on one session a month or two one on one sessions a month, depending on, again, that intensity needed. But in between hand, in between the one-on-one -on -one session, there is support. There is communication between us. So I kind of call it the, like the OT in your back pocket program. So it's, you know, if something's happening, if you're in crisis or, you know, you kind of go, okay, I know we talked about this one concept or this one thing to try and I'm not quite understanding. There's absolutely communication ongoing throughout the program where if there's questions that arise, I'm there to assist and answer. And then in addition to the one-on-one -on -one sessions, there's also individualized education provided. And that can be in the form of, you know, maybe a handout that's given. Personally, what I prefer is video-based education. So if there's mm. something that they want to learn more about and master, then it's I'm creating video content specifically directly for them to address a specific education piece, a specific area, a specific topic that they can then have, rewatch, oh, okay. go through it with me. So there's that piece as well. It's not just the one-on-one, -on -one, but it's also these um, video-based education that is individualized for what they need, what they are hoping to um, experience and accomplish throughout the program. That way they can go back and rewatch and, and really let it sink in on a deeper level. Yeah. I think that's a really good program to have. I'm excited yeah. for it. It's, it's very, it's an exciting time. And, you know, along with that, I really do want to build this community of caregivers and that taps into the other work that I'm doing with LaBlast Dance and Fitness. Um, I am a certified LaBlast Dance and Fitness instructor 
I've been dancing since the age of three. It's just something that's always been in, in part of my life. And dance has given so much to me throughout my life. And I feel like dance is a beautiful um, outlet of expression. So hmm. it's an expressive art, right? It allows hmm. us to tap into our own bodies, get back into ourselves and our own bodies, time for ourselves to listen to our bodies. What is it telling us? What does it need? Um, it's a way to express emotion, feelings, you know, whether whether it's anger, frustration, just overall anxieties and stress and worry, and you can leave it all out on the dance floor when you do it. You don't have to be a dancer to do it. And that's what I love about LaBlast is it's for everybody. Um, there's no experience necessary. It was created by Louis Van Amstel, who's a professional ballroom dancer. You've probably seen him on Dancing with the Stars, if anyone uh, of your listeners watches Dancing with the Stars. And he created these patterns of movement for each style of dance that's very easy to follow along. They call it patternography, not choreography. So you don't have to oh, okay. memorize steps with it. You just, you kind of follow along, you learn these patterns of movement. The more you do it, the more comfortable you get with them. And then you can add more flair and style as much as you want. And it's just a wonderful way to feed your physical, your mental, and your emotional, you know, body, your your well being as as a holistic approach, um, mm. and so that's the other piece that I'm bringing to the caregiver community. That's through weekly online live classes. At this time, it's not being recorded. Maybe in the future, but there's something about dancing live with other people. It's kind of like, if you can't be in the space with other people, this is the next best thing. Um, mm. When you're live with somebody, when you know there's other people doing it at the same time as you are, people who have some un level of understanding of what you're going through, who might be going through something similar and you're all yeah. there together, dancing and expressing and emoting and you know allowing it to be whatever it needs to be for you in that moment. And so that's the other um, program that I am developing and bringing on a weekly basis. And every month, the day and time will change slightly. So if any of your listeners are interested, best way is to find me on Facebook, um, Julie OT Living, or to email me, Julie OT Living at Gmail. And that way you can be on a list of just getting those updates um, for future classes because it does it does change. I know everyone has a different schedule these days. So trying to find a good day and time to, you know, to, you know, to get everybody involved with that. So yeah. Well, I'm excited to see where this goes for you. I, I can see this going really big. Thank you. I'm, it's very exciting. I just it's one of those things like you know, you find something that is truly aligned to who you are, you know, as an occupational therapist working in the medical field, there, there is a lot of burnout there right now in the medical mm. field. And so really taking the time to figure out what is something that I'm passionate about? What is something that I truly want to make a difference in the world? You know, they talk about kind of legacy and, and um, your yeah. zone of genius and what do you love to do and to talk about what, what could you talk about for hours and hours? And if we had hours and hours, I would sit here and talk your ear off about it. Cause it's just so exciting. And I love it so much. Um, but finding this path and working with this population of caregivers, cause like I said earlier, they really are the forgotten person in that care partnership a lot of times. And there are some incredible organizations out there who do, a lot for caregivers. I don't want to discount them, but as, yeah. as a whole, as, as, you know, a global healthcare community, we're, we're not giving enough to the caregivers. Yeah. So I agree with you. Yeah. So that's my, I love opinion. your passion about this. It, it That's, that's what I'm drawn to are people with passion. I, I'm so passionate about spreading awareness for brain injuries. That's why I, I created this podcast and we also translate this to uh, Spotify. I'm a little behind on getting those up there, but I'm catching up. 
But we also, on the Spotify channel, we do a longer version. So if you're interested in coming back at a later time, and we can just sit down and talk as long as you want to talk to about your about all the programs you have going on. Absolutely. I would love that. Let's make it happen. Yeah. Okay. We'll do that. Well, guys, thank you for joining us today. We're going to link everything below in the comments. So if you're interested in getting in touch with her, and I hope you are, um, I'll have a link directly below to get to her uh, sites. So thank you for joining us and we will see you guys next week.